Hey guys, Rick Stone here from Stony Acres Gardening. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about 14 or more seeds that you can be planting during the month of February indoors under your lights, uh, starting those seedlings in preparation for the warmer weather that will be coming here in just a couple of months. So we've got a great list that you can be planting now. Uh, so make sure you stick around to check that out. Before we get started, please make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click that notification bell so you get noticed every time I release new videos. I'd love to have you join us over on Instagram as well. And then make sure you go down in the description, click the link down there. We've got a link to our seed starting workshop, which starts on February 13th this year. This is a fun eight day program that I would love to have you guys come join. Uh, a lot more information in the link. I'll talk more about it at the end of the video, but I did wanna make sure that you guys uh, check that link out down below because it does start on February 13th. Okay, so let's talk about what we can be planting in February. Now this video is meant for people that are in zones that are fairly similar to mine with frost dates that are somewhere between the middle of April to the middle of May. So. Generally speaking, we're talking here about people that live in zones five, six, and seven. Now I know that the gardening zones are not specifically tied to frost dates, but generally, if you live in those garden zones, five, six, and seven, your frost date's probably gonna land sometime between mid-April, mid-May, okay? So that's who this video is intended for, and I've got quite a few things that actually you're gonna to need to get started soon because we wanna get those out before our last frost dates happen, okay? All right, so let's start out with some leafy greens. So here we're talking about things like lettuce, spinach, Swiss chard, kale, bok choy, even some of the more exotics like minzuna or dandelion, things like that. All of those are very frost hardy greens that are going to stand up very well to the cold. And so we can actually get those started about 10 weeks before our last frost date. And as what we wanna do is start those indoors. They're going to stay inside for about six weeks, maybe eight weeks, depending on what your weather is like. And then four weeks or so before your last frost date, we're gonna put those out in the garden. Now I know some of you are gonna say, but that's mid-April. That means that I could still have snow. I'm still gonna have lots of frost. That's okay because these are pretty hardy plants and they're gonna be all right. If you happen to have a really cold night coming along, throw some fabric grow cover over them, maybe just a sheet or something like that to give them a little extra protection, but they are going to be just fine. And we wanna get these leafy greens in early so that they have plenty of time to mature in that cool spring. So we can go four weeks before our last frost date because they're plenty hardy. So you need to get those things started about 10 weeks before indoors, okay? Now, the next group of plants that we want to look at are the brassica family plants. So here we are talking about things like broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, kohlrabi, Brussels sprouts, and collards, okay? All of those are in the brassica family, and these are also very hardy. They stand up very well to cold temperatures. A little bit of snow is not gonna be a big deal. Obviously, they're not gonna grow well in the garden in February, but in April and early May, they're gonna be right at home. And so we wanna actually be starting these about 10 to 12 weeks before our last frost date. So that again, we can put them out about four weeks before our last frost date. So good example is my last frost date is May 15th. That means I wanna get those guys out in the garden about April 15th, so I'm going to start them about February 15th. That's about 12 weeks before my last frost date. So we wanna get those guys started because again, we want to get them out in plenty of time for them to mature while the weather is cool. We want them maturing in mid-May or late May, not mid-June or July when the temperatures are really starting to get hot. And so we wanna get those guys out in the garden now. So now is a great time to get them started indoors. There are a few other plants that we can be starting indoors now. Um, things like bunching onions, we could do bunching onions now. Scallions, some people will call them. Uh, also, we could do our celery this time of year and, and get that started. Again, both of those we're gonna target about uh, you know, 10 to 12 weeks before our last frost date so that we can set them out about four weeks before our last frost date. Then another thing that you should get really busy on is flowers. So 
a lot of flowers, things like petunias or zinnias, marigolds, cosmos, just a ton of different flowers need about 10 to 12 weeks before your last frost date in order to really be established. And so there is just a huge number of flowers that you can be planting. Check the back of your seed package. It's going to tell you, you know, 10 to 12 weeks. So you want to get those started now in February so that they're ready to go out in the right time, probably sometime in, or, you know, late April, early May. So we need to get those guys started as well. Okay. And then the last thing that I'm going to put on the list, and everybody's going to kind of laugh about that, this one, but it is tomatoes. Now, I recognize we can't plant tomatoes out straight out in the garden before our last frost date, but there is a trick, and let me show you a picture. These are called wall of waters, and as what these are is they're water-filled clutches, and they kind of act as a little mini greenhouse, and you can actually plant your tomatoes out in these wall of waters about four weeks, maybe even six weeks before your last frost date. And as what happens is the sunshine during the day collects and warms up that water. And then at night, that heat from the water dissipates into the center of the clutch and keeps your tomatoes nice and cozy warm. I do this every year. Now, I don't plant all of my tomatoes this way, okay? Maybe only three or four plants. So this year, I'll probably do like an early girl tomato. I'll probably do a Roma, maybe a cherry tomato of some kind, and maybe one other like a glacier or something like that. And we'll put those out about four weeks before our last frost date in the, the wall of water. And then they'll mature. And about the time that the frost goes away, We'll be able to pull those wall of waters off and we'll be that much further ahead. Um, this is the only way in my zone that I can have tomatoes by the 1st of July. So I get them started extra early. I plant them mid-April. Uh, our last frost date is, is May 15th. I plant them mid-April and uh, this, this way we're actually able to get a few tomatoes uh, by the 1st of July. Now, again, I don't do this for all of my tomatoes. Most of my tomatoes, I wait until the last frost, but usually I get three or four plants out using these wall of waters, okay? So the brand name for those is wall of water, but there's a whole bunch of different knockoffs and I've used a whole variety of them and they all work great. So I've included a couple of links down in the description of the video for places that you can buy them, but they're available on Amazon. They're available at Gardener Supply. Most of the, the seed houses sell them as well. So again, wall of waters is what they're called, and you can use those to get those tomatoes out extra early, okay? All right, so what am I going to be doing in February? I'm going to be getting all of my brassicas planted. I'm going to get, get a whole bunch more greens going, kale, totsoy, lettuce, bok choy, all of those going, and then I'm going to get some flowers going as well, plus four tomato plants is what I'm going to be doing in February. Okay. All right. So that is all I have for you for this week. Um, before we go, make sure that you subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Go follow us over on Instagram. We'd love to have you join us there as well. And then I did want to take a minute to tell you a little bit about this seed starting workshop that we're having. So it starts on February 13th. It'll go on sale on February 6th. And as what we are doing is it's an eight day event and we go through the first seven days. I have about 25 minutes worth of pre-recorded classes that I have for you. There's a workbook that goes along with it and it works you through the whole process of starting your own seedlings indoors so that by day eight, when we're finished with the workshop, you're ready to get started. Then on day eight, we have some live Q&A broadcasts. I've got some prize drawings that, that we do as well. And so there's just a lot of fun stuff. Cost is only $29. We tried to keep the cost down on this. And last year we had 150 people participate and everybody just loved it. It's looking like we're going to be even more than that this year. And so I would love to have you guys come and join us as well. So there's a link down in the description of this video. If you're watching this video before the 6th of February, there's a link for the wait list. After the 6th of February, uh, it'll actually take you over so that you can buy the course. Again, it's only $29 and the link is in the description. So go check that out. Okay. All right. That, my friends, is all I have for you for this week. Please go get some seeds started. It's a great time to get going, and we will talk to you next week. Happy gardening.